Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead on Porch Time today. Oh guys, we're up and down in the roller coaster of weather again. That's the beautiful thing about the Deep South. The weather is never the same for very long. So, here on Porch Time today, um, I want to talk about when the, uh, when the old ways are lost. You ever stop to think about that? Throughout history, I mean, throughout all of history, knowledge has been passed down from generation to generation. Sons usually done what fathers did because the knowledge was passed down to them. Um, stories were told, uh, grandparents showed, you know, grandkids how to do things and skills were always taught because it was necessary for survival. But if you stop and thought about when the old ways are gone, guys, let me tell you something. We're nearing an age where the old ways are fading out. They're going away. Stop to think about what about what happens when all of the knowledge that's been passed down about growing gardens is gone. Because see, we're in an age now where everything is mechanized. All of the gardening, it's all been mechanized. Uh, there's equipment for everything. Uh, it's all done with satellites from outer space. A man don't even have to drive the tractor anymore. They just fill it up with seeds and fertilize and it does the rest. It's all done with satellites. Machines, uh, drones are used to fly over fields now to check the soil fertility, to check the wetness of the soil and, and let farmers know where they have wet places at in fields, where they have dry places at, where fertilization is needed, where water is needed, all these kind of different things. Guys, the knowledge of just doing gardening is gradually dwindling away. And what happens when it's gone? You know, our grandparents knew all about saving seeds because there wasn't always the abundance of seeds. If you had a seed that worked really good for you and produced really good year after year, you saved the seeds from it and you grew your own garden from those seeds. You didn't have to go to a store to go and, and to get seeds because you had the knowledge to know how to save them and to know which seeds were viable and which ones were good so that you could pass them on from generation to generation. But what happens? What happens when all of this knowledge ceases to exist? Guys, that's when we get in trouble. And we have to understand that, you know, knowledge is one of the greatest tools that we have. But when it's taken from us, subtly, like it's being taken now, like, for instance, the phases of the moon. Most people nowadays, all they know is they look up in the sky and they see a moon up there. They know it's, uh, it's, it's got a small part to it. It's got a big part to it. Sometimes it's not up at night. Sometimes it's full. They have no clue what all these things mean. They have no clue to know that the tides in the world, the oceans are affected by the moon because of the swelling and contracting of the earth and the gravitational pulls of the earth. Um, they have no, no idea that the phase of that moon determines root crops, above ground crops, um, when it's the best time for weeding and when it's the best time for uh, shearing animals, when it's the best time for having babies or, or whatever. The moon directly affects every aspect of our life, and yet none of this is being passed down to anyone anymore. It's like it doesn't mean anything anymore because artificial intelligence has taken over, and there's no need for the old ways, they say. You know, it's all oh, that was just most of it's folklore and old wives' tales and all that kind of stuff, and uh. It's amazing that growing up as a kid, when I grew up, a lot of these things were used and it worked. 
That's all I can say is it worked. Now, you know, there's, there's not a lot of proven science out there with a lot of things that, uh, that the old people did. All they knew was that it worked. They didn't know the, the rhyme or the reason behind any of it. They just knew that it, it worked whenever they was a kid. It worked when their parents were kids. And it was just passed down. If something happens, you just do this. And if it works, you don't question it. And, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of sad that a lot of this knowledge has just gone by the wayside because uh, modern technology has told us, oh, those are just wives' fables and wives' tales. Those, there's no real proof that anything like that actually works. And, and granted, maybe there's not. But the simple fact that there's results from it is enough for me. Now, you know, we sit and we think about, you know, we think about planting and different things like that. But, you know, it, it affects all aspects of life. Take babies, for instance. It's amazing how many people don't know how to handle babies. You go to the hospital now, it's like you get a manual. That tells you, you know, if the baby does this, you do that. You know, whatever. And, you know, when I was a kid growing up, well, uh, my mama would, you know, if we had colic or my brother or my sister had colic or something like that, they would lay them on their knees and bounce them on their belly and then they'd flip them over on their back and they'd bounce them. They'd flip them back over on their belly and they'd bounce them. They'd flip them back over on their back and they'd bounce them. And all of a sudden, the baby would either belch really loud or it would pass gas, or something like that would happen, or they'd put it up on its shoulder and pat it on the back, um, and it would burp. And it would usually relieve the, the pain inside the chest and the stomach, and the baby would calm down. You know, simple things like that. Uh, growing up as a kid, you know, I got a, it, uh, one time I remember I had a big old stick got up in my foot, and my mama tried to dig it out, and she couldn't get it out, and back then, you know, you, you just didn't go to the doctor for everything. And mainly just because there just wasn't no money to go to the doctor with. And I well remember many times my mama would go into the refrigerator in there and, and they always kept salt pork uh, because that's what my daddy loved, salt pork. More and most people love ice cream. And, and yes, he's 88 years old right now and he's still alive and it didn't kill him. And he's, his heart and his body is still just as vitals are still good and strong. Um, but my mama would take a piece of that, uh, pork fat or salt pork, whatever you want to call it. And she'd put it right over that stick in my foot and she put a copper penny on top of it. And I'm talking about the real copper penny now. We're not talking about these new pennies we got. We're talking about the wheat pennies. And she'd put a bandage around my foot. And the next morning when I got up, the skin around where that at was at would be snow white and be all puckered up and everything. And and you'd look, and that stick would be sitting right there at the surface, and she'd reach in with tweezers, and she could just get a hold to it and pull it right out. And then she'd put a bandage, she'd put some ointment on it, and she'd put a bandage on it, and we'd go on about our business. But you know, you look at some people today, and they go, oh, that's just stupid. There's no way, there's no proof that that even works. Well, there may not be any proof that it works. Let me tell you something. It did work. Okay? That's all I can tell you is it did work. There's so many old ways like that and so many old remedies. The old black draw salve. I know a lot of y'all probably remember that. You know, you had those old salves and stuff like that. Uh, Jensen Violet. You know, you go to school, your mouth's all purple on the inside because your mama put Jensen Violet on there. You might have had thrush or whatever, like, all the other different things. It goes on, your ulcers in your mouth or something. And your mama dab your mouth down with Jensen Violet and you felt like a, you know, like you've been eating blueberries all morning or something because your tongue was blue and purple and your mouth was all purple. And and y'all know what I'm talking about because you had the same thing happen to you, you know. Or you go to school and you have these big old, on your arm up here, you have these big old red dots all over your arm or something happened when mama used mercuricom or methylate on you. And, uh, you know, because you had bug bites or something happened to you and you was itching real bad or something. Or you or maybe on this arm over here, you had the old calamine lotion on you. You know, your old arm was all kind of milky looking where the old calamine lotion was all up and down your arm because you gotten poison or something like that. Yeah, we had all those old things that we did. And the funny thing about it is you talk about those things nowadays and people look at you like, what 
in the world is wrong with you? Say you had a toothache and you're sitting there, oh my God, I got a toothache. What's the first thing most people do today? They got to run to an emergency room and spend thousands of dollars if they got a toothache or they run to the dentist immediately because they got a toothache. When the truth of the matter is you could use an essential oil called clove oil and put one drop on it and usually it kills a pain until you have a chance to go to a dentist and get it taken care of. You don't have to spend those emergency fees. Or you can use a toothache plant, which most houses used to have them growing around them. And you just took it off and put it up to the inside of your gum in there and it just numbed the whole side of your mouth in there. Guys, there was lots of ways that the old people did things. And you know, on the live stream the other night, we were talking about essential oils. And guys, essential oils are nothing new. They've been proven to work throughout history. It's kind of funny when my, for, my former wife that passed away was going through cancer, a lot of the cancer treatments that they were giving her were from essential oils from trees and stuff. Um, she took one called Taxotere, and I asked the doc, after doing some research, I said, um, isn't that made from the U-tips of trees up in Oregon and stuff like that? And he goes, yeah, he said, we found out that uh, that the to, that the U tips could be used to make this uh, drug that killed uh, the, the cells in the body. Uh, he said we were using the true U tips for a while. He said, but the, after the, they, we was doing so much damage to the U, U trees, uh, they come up with a synthetic version of it now, and that's what's used in the cancer drugs. And so the oils from the U tree U tip tree U tree was used to make the taxotere drug with. And I just stopped and I thought about it. I was like, wow, all these oils, Christ when he was a baby, we talked about. He had frankincense and myrrh and all these oils brought to him um, for the anointings for different things. You know, frankincense is called the, the oil of kings. You know, these things have been going on throughout history. Um, you know, we have the peppermint oils that's used for this. And I mean, I, I can sit here and just, there's just thousands of oils. Now, the problem with today is a lot of the oils aren't pure. You can buy them cheap, but they're not pure. They've had soy or they've been laced with something, turpentine, all kind of other things uh, to, to, to make them cheaper to sell. You don't ever want to buy from those places. You don't want to ever buy from like Walmarts and stuff off of Amazon and stuff like that. You just don't want to do it. It might be cheaper, but you don't know what you're getting into. You want to go with a company that does third-party testing like we talked about the other night in our live stream. Guys, these are some of the old ways that keeps people from having to pay high medical bills. On our live stream, there was people talking about they got off a lot of their pain meds. Some people had broken their backs and different things and had to have pain medication, and they was able to get off of the pain medication because of some of the essential oils that they were taking. Now, guys, these are old-fashioned remedies. When these old ways are gone, the only thing that's left is synthetic drugs. The body is not designed to take synthetic drugs. The body is an organic matter made to take organic stuff into it. So make sure that you take care of the body. Make sure that you, um, you know, that you put the right things into the body, and 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 that you, you know. You take care of yourself, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You just take care of yourself. And there's a lot of the old ways that are good ways that were that helps in things like that, you know. And I think about when I'm sitting here thinking about the old ways, I think about a lot of the comments that was made on when I was building my barn addition out here. Um they they talked about, you know, I was talking about, well, my nail gun's not working, so I have to use a hammer, and people talking about isn't it amazing all the things you can still do with a hammer? You can still build with a hammer. And you know, the hammer is one of the old ways. And, and the, I've worked guys on construction jobs before that could not drive a nail. Now, they could use a nail gun all day long, but they couldn't drive a hand nail in a board for nothing. They have elephant tracks all over that board. They'd miss and bend nails and all that kind of stuff simply because the hand-eye coordination was just lost. And that's what happens when technology takes over. And we start using more mechanized, more advanced stuff. We lose a lot of the old ways and a lot of the old skills in carpentry. Uh, most people today cannot read a frame and square. They can't lay out rafters. They can't lay out steps. They can't do any of these things with a frame and square because 
Uh, they can't do hip raptors or anything like that because they don't know what the, a, a long 12-12 a long or a short 12-12 or a, or, or a long 6-12 or a short 6-12. They, they don't know the differences between any of that. And you start talking about, you know, you start talking about cutting a hip and then you start talking about cutting a bird mouth in something where you use a, use a hip and valley on a, on a, on a, a frame and square uh, for, the, for the cut. And then you use a long whatever angle it is you're going to be cutting for the bird mouth. If you're cutting a 612, use a long 612 to cut the bird mouth out with. And people don't know these things because they've lost a lot of the old skills and a lot of the old ways of doing things. Now, it's not just carpentry. I mean, uh, cooking, for instance. A lot of people nowadays don't know, how to, don't know how to cook from scratch. All they know how to do is read a recipe. And if they don't have a recipe, oh my God, it can't be done. Yes, it can. People don't know how to substitute stuff. We made pecan cookies here. We put up a pecan cookie recipe on one of our videos. And people's like, can I use walnuts in place of pecans? <laughs> what? Where did that come from? Why couldn't you? It's a nut. You could use a hickory nut, a walnut, you know, whatever. Uh, a, a, it doesn't matter. You know, that's what I'm talking about. A lot of the skills and the arts of cooking are just gone. Moms are not teaching daughters how to cook anymore, mainly because moms don't know how to cook from scratch, because they weren't taught. It's not their fault. They just weren't taught. Canning. Nobody knows how to can anymore, hardly. I'm so, I'm so excited that so many people are trying to get back into canning and what, what happens? The government comes out and tells you, oh, well, and the new uh, Obamacare thing that come out, uh, they're trying to make canning illegal in that because you don't know what's best for you. Did you know that? The government knows what's best for you, but not you. You don't know what's safe. How do you know that's spoiled? How do you know it's not spoiled? How do you know to tell the difference? Can you tell the difference between something that's spoiled and something that's not spoiled? You might get botulism. Guys, it's, it's amazing to me all the things, you know, that are just, they're just being lost. Butchering, for instance. Let's talk about butchering. So many people have no clue how to process an animal. Most of all, how to dispatch it. There's so many different ways to dispatch so many different animals out there. And every animal is different. No animal is the same. And then once they dispatch it, they don't know how to properly bleed it out. They don't know how to properly skin it or scald it, whichever one you're doing, or pluck it. They, they have no clue. If they want to save the hide, they don't know how to tan a hide. They have no clue. They don't know how to, when they get something cut up, they look, and most people go to start cutting it up into, to put in the freezer, they just butcher it up. It looked like a, it looked like a bag massacre or something. They don't even know how to cut the cuts of meat because it was not passed down to them how to do that. These are arts. These are all things that are just, you know, I don't know, they're just lost. They're lost. What about mechanicing? I went to college to be a mechanic. Do you know, I literally cannot work on some of the things on my truck out there. Now the basics, yeah, I can tear a motor down. I can rebuild a thing in no in no time. I can mic it, and I know exactly what I'm doing with that. Um, I can I can read the tolerances and stuff like that. I can set the timing with the timing lights. I can do all that kind of stuff. But these new computerized programs, I don't have a clue because the old basic ways of running an engine, they've just all but wiped it out now. That's why it's so important for us to have at least one older vehicle somewhere in the event of something should happen, like an EMP or something other, you want something pre, I think it's pre-85, um, to be really safe, the old points and condensers and stuff like that. Uh, you you want to have an extra set of them in a Faraday cage just in case, especially the condenser. And, you know, guys, I can remember setting the old carburetors on them old engines, you know, setting the air mixture on them, getting it just right, and um, setting those old quadrajet four barrels. I used to have to rebuild them in school with a white pair of gloves on. I had to put them back together with a white pair of gloves on. 
take out and drill out parts of them and put new parts all in them and stuff like that. Change jet size. I mean, I built racing engines for years because I drove a race car. And, you know, all these things, guys, these things are lost today. All anybody knows how to do anymore is get in and stick a key in and turn it on. And, <laughs> hey, it's, you don't even do that anymore. You just got a thing. You put it inside your pocket or inside your purse. You just get in there and you just push a button. And it cranks up. You know, you want to kill it, you mash your brake in and push a button again and it dies. You know, all these things, guys. Modern technology, yeah, it's pretty good. Makes things a little bit more convenient. But, but you know, in a pinch, you need to know how to do some things. You can't always depend on a mechanic somewhere. Because there may not always be a mechanic around. There's some things that you just need to have the basic knowledge of. You know, I had a I had an idle sensor go out on my Dodge truck one time. It would not idle. Every time I come up to a light or to a stop sign and let up on the gas, it'd go dead. So you know what I did? I got out and I took a zip tie out of my toolbox and I zip tied a nickel to the back side of that thing where the plunger was at and it idled perfect. It's just simple little stuff like that, guys, that got me through in a pinch. You know, and, and mechanicing is just one of those things that, you know, uh, hunting. Let's talk about, you know, most people today don't even know how to hunt anymore. You know, our forefathers and, and the Native Americans, they, they hunted with bows and arrows, and they were, they, their life depended on it now. They weren't going to a store. So they had to be really good with a bow and arrow. Our forefathers, you know, they had the old muzzle loaders and stuff like that, black powder guns, and uh, they went out, they killed their stuff. Um, the art of tracking and stuff like that now, there's so much mechanized stuff out there. I mean, I was looking at a hat the other day that had a built-in light right there that when you turned it on, uh, if there's blood on the ground, it, it, it caused it to glow. What? What's up with that? Tracking. Most people couldn't track a wounded animal if they had to. They wouldn't know one track from another. They couldn't tell you if that animal was standing, walking, trotting, breathing, or whatever. They can't tell you any of these things. That's one thing I liked about JC with Boss of the Swamp here a couple weeks ago. He put up a video and he talked about a he, he talked about this creature in the snow. He said well, he was running right here and he was walking right there. Oh, there was a partridge over there. He walked right here and he flew right here because look where his wings touched the snow. Now that's what I'm talking about. Those are things, my friends, that are lost today. Most people can walk through the forest and never see anything but the trees because they've missed everything they just walked over. They didn't even see where the animals walked. They didn't see the history that just happened in the forest. All they know is they just walked through there making so much noise they sound like a herd of elephants coming through the woods dragging bicycles, you know? They can't quietly slip through the woods for nothing in the world because they weren't taught. And that's sad that some of these lost ways are, are just gone. Or even if you go into the woods, what about foraging? How would you know if you got lost in the woods out there and you had to spend a night or two in the woods? How would you know what to eat? What's edible? What's not edible in your area? And, and believe me, it changes from place to place. What's poisonous? What's not poisonous? Guys, there's lots of things that, you know, could you trap an animal with stuff just that's in the woods? Could you build a fire? Bushcrafting, could you do those things? Could you survive just one night alone in the woods? You know how to build a shelter to stay away from the wind and the cold and the rain? Do you know how to tell which way is north? Do you know how to do all these things without compasses and modern technology? These are things that's been lost throughout the, pri the past generation here. Since we've gone into the generation of artificial intelligence, it's like we have no need for anything anymore. Cursive writing is not even being taught in school anymore because there's no need for it. We all use computers now. I'm going to tell you something. That's hogwash, you know. Um, and you know, I want to kind of draw this thing to a close in the best way I know how. The world we live in today, 
Stop and think about what I'm fixing to tell you. There's no need for God. People today say, I'm my own man. <laughs> There's nothing that's any further from the truth. The very breath you breathe is given to you by God. The nation that forgets God is a nation that soon falls. And guys, I don't want to bust your bubbles, but you're living in a nation, in America, and it has forgotten God. It has tried to pull God from everything that there is about it. And when you do that, this nation will cease to exist. That is why the old ways are so important. Because when the nation falls, and it will, it's not if, it's when it does, because it's going to. You better know some skills. You better know something about the old ways. Jeremiah 6.16 in the Bible, the Lord speaking to the nation of Israel, Return into the old ways, wherein are the good paths. Do you know what an Asian Israel said? We will not. You know what happened? They went into captivity. God has been long-suffering with America. We have murdered some 50-something million babies, or more probably now, for the sin of pleasure. And as a result, that's innocent blood that has been shed. And any time in the Bible that innocent blood was shed by a nation, God sent it into captivity. And my friends, America is no different. When you cease to need God, God ceases to need you. Because right now, you remember, America was a Christian nation. We were sending missionaries all over the world. God was using us. And we do still send missionaries out because my sister's one. I have family. Several of my family members are missionaries in all parts of the world. And we are still doing it. And God is still sending out some missionaries. But my personal belief is the hand of God has been lifted from America. And when the time comes... Will you have enough of the old ways to get you and your family through whatever it is we're going to face? Just like Israel, when they went into captivity in Babylon, they cried out to God, God, what do we do? Because God sent them into captivity because they did not honor what he asked them to honor. And he said, since you're in captivities, build houses and plant gardens and live. You're not coming out anytime soon because of disobedience. And my friends, that's what I want you to think about today. I want you to think about the disobedience of a nation, the nation you live in that we call America the Great. We think she's too big to fail. There's never been an empire that has ever stood that did not fall at some point. And it usually happened when they forgot God. So my friends, today, if you don't learn anything else from Porch Time, learn this. Study. Make yourself aware of the old ways. If you cook, learn to cook from scratch. Whatever you do, Learn to do it the hard way. Learn to do it the old way. Study the phases of the moon. Study mechanicing if that's what you have need on your homestead. Study animals. Study doctoring. Study midwifing. Whatever it is that you need to do. Study planting. Studying how to save seeds. Study all of the essential oils. Learn what essential oils work for you. If you have questions about that, you can contact Wanda, my wife, or Amanda from Freedom Acres. You can ask them about these different oils to bless your life with. But my friends, whatever you do, learn to do it the old way first. And once you've learned to do it the old way, then, my friend, 
you will survive the coming things that this nation will face. Thank you from Deep South Homestead. <laughs>